Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories. The first story, Entitled Woman Thinks That Just Because Man Is Able To Stand Up, That Means He Doesn't Need To Be Using A Mobility Aid That The Store Provides For Customers. The second story, Santa An Impudent Woman In The Aquarium. The third story, Customer Broke The Finger Of A Store Worker. The first story is, Entitled Karen Pushes Me Out Of Electric Cart. For reference, I have a hereditary connective tissue disorder. HEDS that makes my tendons, ligaments, skin, some veins and other connective tissue very loose and stretchy. This causes chronic pain, frequent dislocations, hyperextensions and generally loose joints. I also have a degenerative disc disease and a comorbid form of dysautonomia POTS, that makes my heart race every time I'm standing and can eventually cause me to pass out if I'm standing for too long. I can walk but I have to use a cane when I do because I can't walk very well or for very long. My knees don't like to support my body weight, and I can very easily dislocate a knee or a hip if I step ever so slightly wrong or happen to trip over anything. Because of this, I tend to use my wheelchair for longer outings. Thankfully, my local grocery store has those electric carts that customers can ride around on in the store, so I don't have to go to the trouble of hauling my wheelchair out of the car and can just use one of those. So I'm in the store doing some grocery shopping, minding my own business. I wasn't even really paying attention to the people around me because I just wanted to get what I needed and get out. One of the items I needed happened to be on the top shelf, so I got up out of the electric cart to get it off the shelf. The next thing I know, this effing Karen flips her SH because those carts are for people who need them, not kids who just want to take them for a joyride. I should add here that if you didn't know me or you've never seen me attempt to walk, there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with me. Other than the way I walk, I look perfectly healthy to the casual observer. Now, I get this kind of thing all the time when I'm using one of the store's electric carts, so I just rolled my eyes and told her that I do need it and started to move along to get the rest of my shopping done. Surprise, surprise, that wasn't the end of it. The next thing I know, this bee's hands were on my shoulders and she gave me a hefty shove and effing pushed me so hard I fell out of the cart. Now I'm just sitting there on the floor stunned while this woman yells obscenities at me in between generally incoherent ramblings about dumb A college kids. Thankfully, at this point, my boyfriend came back from grabbing milk. He rounded the corner into the aisle and saw what was going on, and from the look on his face, I'm surprised he didn't deck the bee. The subsequent argument went something like this. BF. Excuse me? What the F do you think you're doing? Karen. This little brat thinks it's okay to steal carts from disabled folks. BF. He is disabled, you effing T. Karen. I saw him get up to reach for something. He's obviously faking it. BF. You thick MF. You think just because he can stand mean he doesn't need a cart? And you think that gives you the right to assault him? What the F is wrong with you? Boyfriend then proceeds to ask me if I want him to call the cops. Lady starts freaking out over the possibility of actual real live assault charges. And I guess the commotion was enough that at that point, one of the store's managers decided to get involved. He sees me still on the floor, asks what's going on. And when my boyfriend explained what had happened, also asked me if I wanted to call the authorities. At this point, I had had enough was pretty shaken up and on the verge of crying, which I don't like to do in public, and just wanted to go home. At the end of all this, the store manager comped my groceries, banned Karen from the store, and told me he would make sure that all the other stores from that store chain that were in the area did too. I've had people give me the side eye or go so far as to chide me for using the store's electric carts before, but I've never had anyone put their hands on me until now. It makes me so mad because this woman literally just saw me stand up to reach something and apparently that was reason enough for her to feel the need to physically remove me from the mobility aid I was using. Now like I said to the casual observer, I don't look disabled. Unless you saw me walking or saw me dislocate something, you probably wouldn't know there was anything wrong with me. It just makes me so angry because people ought to know that invisible illnesses exist and that not all disabilities can be outwardly seen. Also, just because someone can stand up doesn't mean they don't need a wheelchair. It's not like only people who are paralyzed have the right to use one. And even if I was just a dumb A college kid taking an electric cart for a spin, that still doesn't give someone the right to push me out of it. If you think I shouldn't be using it, go get a manager or something. Or better yet, mind your own D business and finish your own D shopping. I shouldn't have to explain my disability to everyone who sees me using a mobility aid. That happens a lot, even when I'm just using my cane. Random strangers will ask me what happened or how I hurt myself. 
My go-to answer slash shutdown for that now is I was born. And I especially shouldn't have to fear for my physical safety every time I need to go get grocery shopping. The second story is, Santa calls out entitled woman on her BS. I work in an aquarium, and during the month of December, Santa visits and swims around the tank and talks to kids. It's an awesome thing, and something different than the normal stuff around here. This event happened a week before Christmas 2019. So when Santa comes to the aquarium to swim with the sharks, he brings his elves with him to help talk to the children. I was one of these elves this year, my first year and maybe my only year because of this single woman. So we were doing our normal thing, and I was on mic talking to kids and translating child speak for Santa to hear. Keep in mind he's in the tank, and we use special microphones and earpieces so everyone can communicate, and it's projected in the room. In between children, my manager comes up and explains that there's a young boy. He's mute and just wants a picture. I'm like, yeah, sure, anything. I was honestly just happy to be there, and making a buck more than my normal pay. Yeet. So we get to the young boy. He's like nine and just stared as I directed him and his mom to scuba Santa. Mom takes the mic and talks to Santa. Mom, hi Santa, this is boy. He doesn't say much, so is it okay if we just get a picture? Santa, of course. And then he poses for the picture. I'm standing off to the side out of the way of the picture, checking the time, as we had to get Santa a break. Air tanks only hold so much air. As I'm getting ready to call the dive team to get the new tank ready, there's a pop in my earpiece. I look up to the microphone and boy is holding it. Mom steps back towards me and we all just watch. At this point there's a small line forming, but we weren't worried about it. This was going to be the last child before the five minute break. Boy, Santa, hi, for Christmas I want a truck. The entire room goes silent and mom starts crying before looking and explaining that he hasn't spoken over six months. So I let him ramble to Santa for a bit. Most is lost because it was rambling, but boy was loving it and no one in line seemed to mind. This was really a Christmas miracle of some sorts. Enter the entitled woman. She was in her 30s with her friends, wanting a picture with Santa. Whatever, I didn't care. Boy finished his babble and went to say goodbye. This woman yells over the crowd, if he isn't going to say real words, get him off the mic. My other elf friend was going to confront her, as I was mic'd in, and whatever I would say would have been everywhere. But before they could get to her, Santa's voice comes over the speakers. Now, fun fact about this particular Santa is that he was a no-nonsense kind of guy in the first place. And in this instant, he became my best friend. Santa, why don't you shut your pie ho ho hole? Now because he hear this means she said it loud enough for my mic to pick it up and project it across the room. She was so red but stayed in line, and Santa finishes with the boy. And I start my signal to Santa to let him know that he needs to go up for a new tank. Me, Santa, Mrs. Claus has some new cookies she wants you to try. Now folks, Santa will be back after a short milk and cookie break. Normally people agree and it's no big deal. We play games with the kids, sing a couple songs, and before you know it, Santa's back. But today this woman was not having it. EW. Oh come on, you have a whole line here and he's just leaving? Me. He'll be right back, I promise. And then I go into song. This woman threw a fit, screaming, cursing us out, making a real scene, and I had left my mic on. But while the song was playing it wasn't projecting her, but Santa could still hear her screaming. Eventually, he came back and finally got to her in line. I reluctantly let her go up, and I step out of the way for a picture, after she told me that if I was anywhere near the picture, she would have my head. I had security on standby, and they were ready to walk her out, because I don't want that horse SH, not in my aquarium, and the best thing ever happened. Santa, now ho ho hold on here, are you the woman who yelled at a little boy? Silence, like no one moved, and threw a fit when I had to go try Mrs. Claus's new cookie recipe? She just sat there staring at him. I'll have you know that that makes you number one on the naughty list. We need to be compassionate and nice to others. My elves here are just doing what I've instructed them to do and you're yelling at them. That's not in the spirit of the holidays. You need to apologize to everyone you've been mean to and then go to the end of the line and wait again. Until that's done, I'm not taking a picture with a naughty person. I was hyped. The woman was a bee. She ended up storming away screaming for a manager. I believe she found one, but was escorted out with no picture. Boy got to meet Santa out of the tank and got a super special picture with him and all his elves. He's a regular at the aquarium and likes to show us new words he's learned. It's amazing and the diver is my favorite dude forever and always. And the last story is, Entitled customer dislocated my finger, keeps on shopping. Pre-COVID, I worked at a big club warehouse in customer service. The job was great and members were usually awesome. But every now and then you'd find the most entitled SOBs to ever walk the earth. Based on the way they treated me and others, I can only assume they don't even see us as human. We were only lifelike robots built to ring up their items and load their carts. 
One such incident that proves my assumption happened on a super busy Saturday. It was pouring outside. Members were fighting over parking close to the door, then bolting for the entrance as if their lives depended on it. As a courtesy to members, on rainy days we always had someone outside in the front of the cart, return bay to dry off the carts. This day was so busy, members were coming in faster than I could dry carts for them. Most were super nice and patient. They waited in line for a dry one, and almost everyone thanked me. A few, who were in a hurry or didn't care about dry carts, just skipped the line and grabbed a wet cart. One such member rushed up and grabbed a wet cart from behind me. Sometimes, carts get jammed or snagged together. Usually it's the buckle for the kitty seat getting tangled, but sometimes it's a warp in the cart from damage. This poor member grabbed one such warped cart, and it dragged its buddy with it. The member attempted to dislodge it. He yanked, he twisted, he shook them violently. He looked at me and demanded, help me get these carts separated. I offered him a dry one. Nope, he wanted that cart specifically for some reason. I abandoned my drying rag and attempted to pry the carts apart. It was like trying to separate two buffaloes in a horn lock. They refused to budge. I looked at the metal flap that allowed the carts to nest into each other. I saw where it was snagged and reached in to coax it free. I placed my other hand on the lip of the second cart to give me leverage while I untangled them. The member demanded loudly, come on, I'm in a hurry. He decided I was clearly too incompetent to separate them, so he reached out to give the front cart one more tug. At that exact moment I loosened the second cart and the front cart sprang free. It launched forward, catching my thumb between it and the second stationary cart. I heard the pop sound of my thumb dislocating a few seconds before the pain hit me. I yanked my hand free and managed to stifle my choice profanity with less fireable words. Sucking sticks of saffron on a ship. My supervisor witnessed this and still tells people it's his favorite outburst. The member just looks at me like I'm nuts. There, all I needed was a card. Was that so hard? I'm cradling my oddly shaped hand. Sir, I think you broke my finger. The member just shrugs, huffs and walks into the warehouse. Looked like he forgot I existed the second he took his eyes off me. My supervisor witnessed the whole thing, but was more worried about me, not the member. He pulled me aside and radioed for ice. Lucky or unlucky, I'm very pain tolerant. It's not the first joint I've dislocated. I also know the easiest way to end the pain is to reset the joint. I fiddle around with my weirdly dangly thumb until I feel it click back into place. My whole thumb was swollen and turning a lovely shade of purple. My supervisor got me sent inside to write up an incident report. He sent a posse of employees into the store to find the member and sentence him to banishment. But as it was insanely busy, they never found him. By far the worst customer ever. At least I got an extra day off. I hope you love these stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out.